Right? A little different, a little reflective version of Redemption song. Okay. Totally. Nostalgic. It's very like movie soundtrack. You talk about playing uh, the baritone with the high E. Yeah. Um, so. What does that do for you versus like coming from the guitar side, high four kind of a thing? Yeah. Um, so the great thing about the baritone is if, if you're familiar with playing the guitar, um, you know, everything translates, right? Because it's in the same tuning with E, B, uh, G, D. Um, and now the difference with the way this one is set up is with the re-entrant, with the high D. Um, the great thing about that is um, it's, it creates more closed voicings. And so in music theory, there's something called open voicings and closed voicings. And basically, in a nutshell, it's when you take... Um, the notes in a chord so the most basic chord is is like a C chord C E G and if you were to play those next to each other on a piano that's what we call a closed voicing but if we were to take say the note E and move it up an octave and sort of take the note C and move that down an octave and spread out the notes right we call that an open voicing and um, usually guitar is really good at open voicings but by moving this t top string up an octave, you can take a, what was just a normal, say, um, you know, a D7 chord on the guitar. Um, and instead of having um, this D note being down as a bass note, now it's within the chord. So the notes in ascending order are D, sorry, A, C, D, F sharp, and the C and the D are now crunched together, right? So usually you would have like D, A, C, F sharp, and then now that D is flipped, so now it's actually right next to the note C. So, and that sound, um, creates a lot more tension and a lot more um, tight harmonies, right? Because now the note D here is a third away from the F sharp, and so we hear, right? That kind of a sound. And also the note C and the note D, before this, they were a seventh away from each other, right? D, E, F, G, A, B, C that distance, but now we took that D note and put it right above C, so it's C to D. Yeah, so we took that low note um, D and pushed it up the octave, and so now D happens right after C, and so we call that a second away from each other, one, two. And that sound rubs a lot more. Yeah, there's some some clashing sort of between the notes but it's not ugly at all it's it's really nice so the other thing that this baritone does and the re-entrant tuning is it allows you to uh, and this is something I learned from Benny Chong um, but he doesn't hear you know a strum just as a strum um, it really depends on the way you lean when you strum and so um, now with this being the DGBE Right? We can think of that as either a G6 chord or an E minor 7. Um, and either way, we have these outer notes, G and A. Same thing, those are a second apart now, right? Sorry, I'm thinking regular ukulele. Um, baritone is D and E. And so because those are a second away from each other, within the context of a chord, have two different mel melodic type notes. Um, move that over any other chord really, so say um, a G7 right on there. Now we have da -da -da. say an F chord or a C on the ukulele, on the baritone here, right? Well if I remove my index finger, uh, middle finger here, and just leave the index. So we have D, G, C, E. This is 
is like a C9, right? Or a C add two. Much nicer than if we were to have this top string. That same voicing, uh, sort of playing it zero, zero, one, zero, wouldn't have this same effect with the linear tuning that has the low D. And then the second benefit to that is not only is this a lush chord, but now I have two melodic notes that I can hit um, with if I want to use a chord type, uh, chord melody type technique. All on an F chord. One finger. Down up. Um, same thing for almost any shape. Let's say A7, right? On the on standard ukulele, on the uh, baritone here, this would be an E7. Yeah, E7 shape. Well, here the D and the E are still a second away from each other. So what do we hear? Between the root and the seventh. There it is. Yeah, and this, you know, this the, the great thing about this lattice, the lattice bracing on the baritone here, it really creates uh, more depth. You know, very similar to my guitar, which is also a lattice brace. Um, it, it activates a lot of the um, overtones. Um, they're, they're more, they tend to be more live, I find, on the lattice. Um, so the same pitch, just on a standard bracing, uh, wouldn't resonate and ring for as long. And I'm not sure if it's, if it's the bracing, um, the bracing allowing it to resonate more, which then activates other strings more, you know. But, but the lattice tend to have this sort of built-in resonance, um, that you don't get from from other bracing techniques. You know, there's those are also beautiful sounds and everything, right? Every instrument has a different voice, just like people do. Um, and eventually, you get to know somebody's voice. You get to know that ukulele, um, and you get to know, like, just like you can tell, hey, oh, what you from? Oh, you're from Molokai. I can tell, right? Oh, you're from you're from Big Island. I can tell from the way you talk. Oh, you call it ice shave. Yeah, you're from you're from Hilo, right? But, um, you know, a lattice brace versus a, a standard bracing, we can, you know, as a musician, as, a, as an instrumentalist, I think if you're a familiar, you start to hear those differences right away. Yeah. And this is definitely a lattice through and through. It's really great. It's a very satisfying instrument to play. Melodically, something like Redemption Song, um, but also even for chords, you know. All right, that just rung extra long. It's great, and um, yeah, that that's really the the wonderful thing about the lattice is that they just. Um, sing and sing for days and so there it is yeah i'm not sure the woods or anything like that on this one it's a cedar mahogany is this cedar and mahogany okay yeah 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 no it's beautiful and it's, of course cedar too you know it's just it's always got a nice warmth to it you know i always prefer uh, i know they say that um, spruce can you know evolve more over time with the player um and sort of, but but cedar is just so um, consistent with that warmth, you know. I find that um, cedar also creates good overall balance, like the notes sort of sing with the same voice across the instrument. Um, No matter where we're playing, it has that same same voice. It doesn't really change up here and start to get 
like a lot of instruments start to sound sort of muffled or, or muted when you move to the higher register. And if anything, it opens up, you know, which is just amazing. Um, there we go. All right, let's try some uh, Take the A Train. This is one I learned from the great jazz ukulelist Benny Chong. That part's so tricky. <laughs> you just kind of have to guesstimate it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about this fast to end up over each fret. If you go from here to here at the same rate of speed, right? So it can't be like fast and then slow. Or fast and then slow is just sort of da 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 end up there da 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 three and da 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 three and 